Hey, good morning, Living Water. Uh, thanks for joining me today. We are continuing our devotionals as we are um, going through the book of Ephesians now. We started Ephesians chapter 1 yesterday morning, Ephesians chapter 2 today. Um, this is Monday, June the 8th. Um, and as we jump into Ephesians chapter 2, um, there's a couple of themes that sort of run through this chapter. Um, the first one is uh, kind of right in line with where our sermon was yesterday, our message we shared uh, here at Living Water. Um, it's about grace. Um, these first few verses, Paul is um, really sharing with this church in Ephesus to understand that it's not about your former way of life. Our former way of life put us as, um, as objects of wrath before God. Objects of wrath, man, a God who is wrathful. Well, where do we get that? I mean, that's the, uh, that's the idea of hell. That's the idea of an eternity separated from God. Um, that's a place that we are all destined for without the grace of God. Um, and as Paul walks through this idea at the beginning of Ephesians, uh, of, of chapter 2, he's telling us that, um, that that used to be our former way of life. And this church in Ephesus, when he's writing to these Christians, he's saying you used to be that way, but you need to understand that, um, well, let me read Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. says, For it is by grace you have been saved, through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Um God had this plan and has this plan laid out, and God has a plan and a purpose for every single one of us. He wants us to uh, wants us to serve Him. He wants us to love Him, but that's not how salvation comes. Salvation comes completely by grace. It is only by God saying, "I choose you and I love you," and it's my grace. It's the blood of Jesus that was shed that will bring you to the Father one day, and and even give us that access now. Um, and then he says, but you were created for good works. The good works is not what brings you to Jesus. The good works is something you do out of love. Um, you see, I am much more motivated by love than I am by a law or a rule. Um, I'm much more motivated by uh, trying to, to do the right thing because I love someone than by a rule that's set before me. Um, I mentioned as I started, today's June the 8th, uh, 2020. Um, just this weekend, uh, there was a mark that kind of came and went. I didn't see a lot of fanfare about it this year, I guess because of everything else happening in the world. But uh, June the 6th, uh, 1944, um, was the D-Day invasion. Uh, the American and Allied forces invaded the coast of France, um, which was uh, controlled by Germany, Nazi Germany at the time. And they hit that beach, and you've, you've read history, you've maybe even seen movies about it, um, but I, I can't even, even some of the graphic things that I've seen in the movies, I still can't imagine what that scene must have looked like. But those men were motivated by something. Um, they weren't motivated by the fact that somebody told them to land on a beach. Now, maybe some of them were, but I, I see in those men, and especially those older men who are still veterans of that day that, that have still lived to today, um, they're motivated by love, um, love for their country, love for their brothers, uh, love for their wives and their children that were at home. Um, they were going to rid the world of uh, Nazi Germany, um, and, and that love motivated them. I, I think when, when, when Paul is talking about us being created for good works, he reminds us to be motivated by love. Uh, anything that we do, yeah, do you need to serve in your church? Sure you do. You ought to, you ought to volunteer and be a part of serving other people. That's, that's an incredible, incredible act of love in your church. But what about outside the doors of your church? Who are you standing up for? Who are you walking with? Who are you serving in your community? Who are you, um, you know, sharing your life with? So that's kind of the beginning of Ephesians chapter 2. And then Paul, um, it's, it's not that he changes or, or, or jumps on a different train track. He sort of continues on, and he does something uh, very unifying. In verse 11, he says, Therefore remember that formerly you who are Gentiles by birth and called uncircumcised by those who call themselves the circumcision, which would be the Jews, which is done in the body by human hands. Remember 
that at that time you were separate from Christ, excluded from citizenship, citizenship in Israel, and foreigners to the covenants of the promise, without hope and without God in the world. But now, in Christ Jesus, you who were once far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ. Paul begins to talk about the fact that um, there, there isn't circumcised and uncircumcised and Jew and Greek and Gentile in today's world, black or white. Um, we're all one. Um, and and if, if, if we will unite under Christ, uh, Paul is talking about the body of Christ. He's talking about the church. But I think we can, without stretching too far, also just apply that even further and say if we will just unite and recognize how much we have in common versus how much we have that is separate, then God can do something incredible. But in the context of what Paul is teaching in Ephesians chapter 2, he reminds the church that if we will unite under the grace of God, if we will unite and realize that, that there isn't any difference, that we are about God's work and glorifying him, um, in verse 19 he says, Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people and also members of his household, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone, everything built on Jesus. In him the whole body, excuse me, in him the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him you too are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. It's by the grace of God that we can become who God wants us to be because he created us, his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, and he wants us to be united in following him because it's a grace-filled life and a life that brings people together that the Holy Spirit can fill, can use to uh, not just make a difference in your personal life or in your home, but can make a difference in your city, in your state, in your world. Um, grace-filled. It's by grace we've been saved, not by works, and then united before Christ. Um, I wonder today, as, um, as I was reading this, as I was going over it, um, I, I wonder in me, how much grace is uh, displayed out of me? Uh, how often do, do I read uh, the news, see the news, um, look at someone, and don't offer grace? Um, I want to be a grace-filled, Holy Spirit-filled Christian who loves everyone. People that have offended me, people that have hurt me, I still want to love them. I still want to offer them grace. Um, people that, that uh, may even think differently than me, I still want to offer them grace. Those that are Christians and we're going after the same thing, which is bringing people to Jesus, then I want to be uni united with them. Um, even though we may be going about it in different ways, I still want to be united with anyone who is about the grace of God. Um, what would that look like in your life today? I wonder. Um, think about it, read it, Ephesians chapter 2, an incredible chapter in this letter that Paul is writing to the church at Ephesus. Um, continue reading. Um, this will be a good study and a, a good devotional as we go through it. Uh, I love you today. I pray you continue to read and continue to find, uh, find Jesus, um, and you'll find him right in his word um, that was inspired uh, by God, inspired by the Holy Spirit, and uh, he'll speak to you if you'll read it and allow it to become alive in you. Have a great day.